What's up, gentlemen? Welcome back to the T. Shanley, starting a business, building a brand blog. This one, big number, 236. So, I want to talk real quick uh, before I dive into uh, to this one question um, that, that, uh, that, that, that just brought me back. And I think it is incredibly important, and that is what the majority of this vlog is going to be talking about. And that is having to get a job um, when you are trying to be an entrepreneur. Um, just to pay your bills. It's something that I've had to do. Um, it's some, something that our friend uh, Gary Hernandez, self-defense and urban survival. Is that your name, Gary? Yes. <laughs> I got it without even looking. Um, anyway, talk about that in a second. Um, but real quick, I just want to make just, I apologize for a bad thumbnail and topic in terms of taste. Um, I upset uh, one of our viewers, um, RJ, uh, something Dennis, see, I can't read. <laughs> anyway, um, in the title of the last vlog, I said, you know, t books are stupid, and in the thumbnail, I'm, I'm ripping a book. Um, that was just supposed to be clickbait. <laughs> so, bad, bad on me, because A, I offended somebody, which, you know what, you're going to offend some people once in a while, um, and B, it didn't really get many people to click. The, view, the views are really low, so I failed on two fronts, so I'm an idiot. Um, and, um, and, and just to be clear to our friend RJ, I was not saying that, that books are stupid. I was basically just saying that that, that that was a clickbait title, sort of taken a little, anyway, um, I'm not, I do not think books are stupid. I think they're amazing. I think that they're incredible. I personally don't like them because I don't like them because of issues that I have, but they're my issues. But the majority of people don't have my issues and there are incredible books out there and, and I think learning and, and, and the fact that you know, other people are taking their time to share you know, thoughts and insights are, are amazing. And that is why I encouraged everybody last time that had a great book that they love to link it down below or to list it down below. And so if you go back to last week's blog, guys, um, below, you're going to see a lot of incredible business books that have been listed by fellow uh, subscribers and friends at T. Shanley. Um, I don't read, and so I am, am totally, I don't know. Uh, but I know that a lot of you guys do. A lot of people, and the majority of people do gain a lot of value and insight from other people. That's not how I learn. To our friend who I offended, who's an author, I'm sorry. It was a bad title, and, um, and, and my bad but I don't think books are stupid. Oh, why was I shutting that off? I gotta tell you something. I gotta tell you about Josh, right? Josh at Tee Shanley, who's bringing the content strong for you guys. This week, it's all about body acne. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you a little, little, little story. I used to have, when I was growing up, I, I, I lived by a pool, right? I, I worked at a snack bar, I was on the swim team, and um, it was a public pool. And I always lifted weights, like from a young age, from like 12 years old. And one summer, I don't know what was going on with me or my body or whatever, but my back, the entire thing was covered with, with like acne, like horrible. But the problem is like you couldn't squeeze them, you couldn't pop them. I would scrub it. There's nothing that I did that, that, that helped it. Um, and it was the most like, it was emotionally, it was super like embarrassing. It was, it was debilitating. I didn't want to like take my shirt off at the pool. Whenever I would get in the water, I'd like take my shirt off and then jump in and try and hide my back. It was horrible. And I think I was probably like 15 or 16 when that was happening. So it was probably something to do with like testosterone levels or, or something else going on with my body. But acne and, and back knee and acne on your chest it's, it's real, and a lot of people do suffer and struggle with that. And the video this week is going to help you guys that, that do. Um, one thing that, that I get still, if I'm not careful, is, is like ingrown like bumps and stuff um, on my chest or on, in my, like, my, my junk or my thighs because I do shave my leg. And I use like a loofah. And so because I shave, I manscape, I, I shave my legs, I shave my chest, I shave, I shave my junk. Every time I get in the shower, I am using a loofah in order to exfoliate because when you shave, oftentimes if that hair doesn't like break through the surface or you shave like really close, you can actually trap the hair and that's how you're going to get a lot of ingrown hairs and, and issues with that. And so for me, anytime or any place I manscape, I am scrubbing and making sure that I am clean and trying to release those trapped hairs. And for those of you who experience razor bumps and ingrown hairs on your face, a few things that you can do um, is you can actually use the T. Shanley exfoliating scrub prior to shaving. And so before shaving, just use a little bit of this and 
exfoliate the area that you're going to be shaving. This helps to release trapped hairs. Um, and so that is one of the benefits to using this. Another pro tip I will give you, if you are somebody who suffers from razor burn, ingrown hairs, uncomfortable shaving, something else that I would recommend is to not use like multi-blade like cartridge razors, right? Cartridge razors with like 27 blades are tough because each pass you make, it's like 27 blades going over your skin. And so a better option for you, and you probably know this because you've probably done the research, is a single blade safety razor or even those cheap ass like double blades or single blades like Bix that come in like packs of 100. Those are better for people that, that shave um, or that, that get ingrown hairs or, or shaving irritation. And so just wanted to throw that out there. Now, gentlemen, I want to tell you a little bit about Tiege Hanley. Tiege Hanley is doing great. Um, we, we had like a little issue. So every month we get sort of the, 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 the books, right? We keep, you know, great book, we keep great books. You know, the records, the, all the information in terms of our, our spend and all the different areas, what are our expenses, what is our profit, what is our, our, our percentage of, of net profit after everything is spent. And so something interesting this month that made us go, huh? And I actually said to Kelly, I said, is there a typo? Because that just doesn't make sense to me. Um, we're still like digging into the numbers, but a few months ago, we started really pushing and promoting the starter system, right? It's a lower price box, 15 bucks. Well, what we found is that with that box, even with shipping, you know, depending on the acquisition cost, when I promote something, the acquisition cost is zero. When Akin and Josh and everybody else that's working in, in paid traffic acquires a customer, it's more expensive. But when I acquire a customer, you know, there, there's really no you know, acquisition cost. What we found is that when we average everything out, because people with the starter system have the ability to add a product, a point of purchase, whether or not it's a, a hand sanitizer or a scrub or a moist, like whatever, our average box value instead of $15 was around $21, which was great. But one of the issues that we are sort of, sort of trying to understand and just get our heads around is the fact that that is still lower than a level one box, right? A level one box is, is 25 bucks. Level two is, is 35. Level three is, is 45. And so the, the revenue, even though we are, we are selling more boxes than we ever have, like literally our subscriber base is the highest it's ever been right now. But our cost of goods sold were, was higher and our, our profit margin at the end of the month was lower than we expected. And so we're still profitable. We're not like in the red or anything like that, but trying to understand the nuance behind like everything. The fact that we have eliminated for most part um, all of our discounting, we're, like there, there are a lot of different things in play. And, and the challenging thing about analyzing data is that you gotta know what you're looking at and you've gotta analyze the right thing. And so we don't know yet because we don't have enough data what actually happens to that person who comes in at a lower value? Do they stay longer because they actually you know, can customize their box, they don't churn as fast? There's a lot of nuance in it, but we are in the process of just trying to figure it out. Does this mean that we should go back to just trying to push you know, level one, level two, level three box? Something else that we're working on is like a BYOB, right? Like a build your own box where you come in and as long as you add like two products, you can build your box. Something else we're working on is making add-ons sticky. And so if you, you know, are a starter system and you love using the scrub and the eyes, right? We don't currently have the ability to make that like your monthly box, right? You've got to go in to your dashboard and add it each time you get the notification that, hey, we're getting ready to ship out your product, or you've got to know that, hey, you've got to go in and adjust it so that you get the products you want. Something else we're working on is having the ability to like drop a product. So if you're a level three user and you're like, yo, I love everything except the scrub, you know, we want to hopefully in the near future have the, the functionality of our website where you can just go and drop it and it's going to basically reduce your cost by, you know, some, some number. And so these are all the things that we're trying to work on. But as of right now, we are concerned that by offering people a lower option to come in on, it is affecting our, our profitability. And so 
that's something to be determined. We're not 100%, like, we don't, we don't know 100% because we don't have enough data. We don't have months and months of, of, of information. And so that's kind of what we're, we're dealing with. And so it's not like a red alert thing because, you know, sales are good every day. Like, we're, we're doing well. It's just trying to figure out what changes that you've made and, like, the changes, how they impact the rest of the business and your bottom line. And so just wanted to give you a little update and, and, and insight into something that we've changed and something we're dealing with. But now I want to get to Gary's question. So Gary Hernandez, Self-Defense and Urban Survival. What's up, brother? Thanks for being a part of this. And um, thank you for this question because I think that this is, this is the reality that a lot of you, a lot of us, a lot of me even, um, have faced in the past and could potentially face in the future. And right now, with the way that things are so crazy, um, in terms of our economy and the world, we don't know what's going to happen. And so this is something that I, I think is incredibly important and powerful for everybody to hear. He says, business question. Hey, Aaron, my question is, with this corona thing going on, I have to get a part-time job working for someone else to make extra money. It's a little weird having to work for someone else, not being the boss or the person in charge after all these years. I know you talked about having to work a beer cart for someone um, else you know, to pay your bills. How did you get past the feeling of falling back two steps in life and feeling frustrated that you're not going forward and growing? Thanks, Gary Hernandez. This question is so amazing because there are two types of people in this world. There are those people like you, Gary, that are gonna do what it takes, do what is necessary in order to put food in the table, and you are gonna swallow your pride because when you do this, it is like taking one big gulp of, of your pride. Um, and, and it's hard, and it's something that, that you've gotta face, you've gotta deal with. It's something that, that I had to do when I was working for the, uh, for the country club driving a beer cart. I wasn't making money. I didn't have money. I didn't have money to pay my, my then girlfriend, my now, my now wife, you know, the bills. And so what was harder for me? Asking her for a handout and putting her in that position that she's got to take care of me or me taking a big gulp of my pride and doing what I needed to do. The only thing that was hiring because I needed to work like on weekends and I had no experience like serving or being like a bartender or anything like that. Um, was, was, this, was this beer cart. And so it was something that I had to do. And it's something that surprisingly I really enjoyed. Now, I didn't enjoy the fact that everything was exploding and I was go like, I didn't know what to do. And I was driving a beer cart and, and here I am, you know, 30 years old, you know, going and asking, you know, dudes if they want a beer or they want a, 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 a margarita. You know, it's, uh, it is humiliating. I got to be honest, it was humiliating for me, but not as humiliating as the alternative, which was asking for people for help. I am a prideful person. I take pride in my ability. I take pride in my self-sufficiency. And that sounds a lot like you, Gary. You are a prideful person, and you are going to do what you need to do in order to make it work. Right now, things are not ideal. Right now, you have had to work for somebody else. And I gotta help, let me, let me just say, let me tell you the positive thing about working for somebody else. And what I loved about that beer cart, I didn't have to think. I didn't have to worry about paying those bills or the business or anything like that. I got to just do what I do. Now, the interesting thing is that I was an overachiever when I came in. Um, and I was the only guy to ever drive a beer cart. Everybody else was like these sassy little lassies who were dressed like all skimpy. And I went in and I said, hey, I'm applying for, for I, want to be, I want to drive a beer cart. And he's like, Do you, are you sure you don't want to just work like inside? I'm like, no, I want to, I want to drive a beer cart because I'm thinking, yo, I can be outside. I can do all this. And um, I ended up deciding that I was going to be because you could earn commission on how much you sold. And I'm like, yo. You put me out there, I'm gonna outsell the crap out of these, these little girls. And the funny thing, and this is, I know I'm just going down memory lane and taking a little detour, Gary, I apologize. But um, <laughs> something funny was that, you know, 
the, these guys, the golfers, you know, these old, you know, good old boys that are at a country club, and they're used to having these like little like 20-year-olds like come up and, and like, ha, ha, right? And I'd be like, hey, guys, you know, what can I get you? And um, the, the, my big joke then was, you're not as cute as the other ones. And I would say, come on, I've seen some of them. Yes, I am. <laughs> because some of them, like, not 100% sassy. Anyway, um, I ended up being the number one selling beer cart person on the course. Um, I crushed it every month because I would always try to, like, upsell people. And, and I mean, it was, it was survival for me. And so that was something I was actually proud of. But I loved the job. I didn't love the fact that I was doing that but it allowed me to be outside. It allowed me to reflect and, and kind of, you know, think about sort of what's next. Um, so for me, it was bad, but it wasn't all bad. And the other beautiful thing is that it allowed me to, to, to pay my bills and pay my own way. Gary, it's tough. And right now you're going to do what you got to do. And, and I know that your business specifically has had and taken some lumps up until this. And so, um, you know, it has not always been smooth sailing for you, and, and you're going through a transitional period. But transitional periods are okay, and they're going to happen. The worst thing you can do as an entrepreneur or as a business person is not read the writing on the walls and not do what you need to do in order to take care of yourself and your family. And that is the one thing. You've got to be willing to do the work that is uncomfortable. You've got to be able to do the things that are not glamorous. And true people with grit and entrepreneurship in their blood and integrity and drive and motivation, you're going to do it. Is it going to suck? Yes. Is it going to sting? The fact that you've got to do it and just be like, yo, yes, it sucks 100%. But it beats the alternative, asking other people for help. At least you have your dignity. At least you are willing to step up. And the guarantee that I give you is by doing this, by swallowing your pride and making it work even though things suck, even though it's hard, even though it's not your dream and your goal right now, it will pay off in the long run. You will get back on your feet. You will succeed. This is a temporary thing. It's a bump in the road, but it's your road. It's your story. And then when you get, and then you, you're going to have a story like me. Yo, when I was going through this, I got to drive a beer cart. That's a pretty sick ass story, right? You get to do it. At the time, it sucks, but you can do it. And I'm proud of you for asking this question. I'm proud of you for doing the things that you need to do right now. This isn't, this isn't always, this is right now. It is temporary, but you got to do what you got to do. And the true entrepreneurs, the people that ultimately are going to succeed are the people that are going to do e the things that you need to do in order to move forward, even when it's not sexy, even when it's not glamorous, even when it's embarrassing, because that's what it was for me. It was embarrassing to be there. It was embarrassing because I'm like, here I am, I've got this business, here I am trying to franchise this, and here I am driving a beer cart because it beat the alternative. Gentlemen, that is where I'm going to wrap things up. And I, I just, I encourage you, do not be, you are not too good to drive a beer cart. You're not too good to work for somebody else. You've got to do what you've got to do, but do not ask for a handout if you can help it. I think that's the... Uh, the most important lesson that you're going to learn is be self-sufficient and do what you need to do. Gary's doing it. I did it. I know Kelly's done it. Rob's probably done it. Will you do it? Are you strong enough? Are you man enough to do it? Because that's what it takes. That is where I'm going to wrap things up because the time right now is like 1.30 and uh, I got to go get in line for like a car parade. <laughs> for my mother-in-law. Um, you know, she is locked down at this like senior center. Um, she's got uh, dementia. And um, I, I've told you guys, I think probably the story of having to go and pick her up. And my wife was estranged from her for all these years. And anyway, she's in a nursing home and we haven't been able to actually see her. We would go by every single day. I would go by on my lunch break to say hi and get cookies, which is why I started to get a little fat. And um, I, the cookies are delicious. Well, anyway, now we can't see her because everything is locked down. The good news is that everybody, for what I, from what I understand, is safe in that nursing home. The other thing I'd just like to update you on is that my grandmother, Nana, who got the COVID thing, she kicked its ass. 
Hell yeah, Nana. 94 is still going strong. Anyway, I got to go. They're having like a, like, a, like a parade, right, for these old, older people where we did like poster board, like, we love you. Boo. Yeah, anyway, uh, that's, that's, what, that's what your boy has got to go do. It's priorities, gentlemen. It's the loved ones. It's the people in your life. At this time, you got to do what you got to do. Gary, I'm proud of you. You can get through this. Gentlemen, I believe in you. You got this. It sucks right now, but you will get through this as long as we stick together and take care of ourselves and don't go too far like down the self-destructive rabbit hole with drinking and unhealthy things. Guys, we love you more than what? Say it with me, our double monk strap shoes. Guys, we'll see you next week. If you've got a business question, real quick, <laughs> business question, start it with business question down below, ask it, and we will dive in next week. Guys, you rock.